I said, say, uh, the mistake I've made in my research center by Sir Robin Murray, you know, is he said I ignored the social factor for 20 years. And my preconceptions had made me blind to the, the influence of the social environment. And so this story for the past three decades, we devote ourselves to address the importance of social factors by helping the patient rebuild their social connections in uni to overcome the limitations of the various pharmacotherapies and the psychotherapies. Um, this, this program starts from, I think, that in the 1988 and 1989. And back then, this hospital I have, we, there, was, there were only a few social workers, perhaps the four social workers, three clinical psychologists, and no qualified occupational therapist, and even no qualified psychiatrist before I came to this hospital. So, and actually, we have no idea about the second generation antipsychotics. We only have a few types of first generation antipsychotics and the TCAs. But um, the patient still uh, can uh, become stable after treatment, uh, months or years of treatment, and finally then uh, turn out stable. But they 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 are they were trapped in a back ward in this hospital, and their condition is pretty uh, miserable. Although their symptoms subside. And my colleagues back then, they feel so unsatisfied and unfair and so miserable. So they try to help the patient to find the way out. But um, uh, their family give up, the society gave up. And uh, they, the patients are feel not satisfied with, with the tradition of occupational therapy, all the activities like the dancing, singing, and watching movie. So they say, hey, maybe we can find how help them find a job in the UD. So we start in the very small scale. Uh, only a few patients back then, maybe less than 10 patients, they, we try to help them find the jobs. Uh, find the jobs in the tea plantation. And for the past three decades, we actually build a therapeutic environment, kind of a social ecosystem for the patients to reintegrate themselves into the community. But we started this, this kind of program not from, to, not from looking for the literature, the research in the papers. You know, uh, back then there was no Google and uh, we, uh, this hospital is the remote countries, the far away from the big cities and from the big, big the medical centers and the libraries. It's very hard to reach those kind of data or research. So we just try to help them just, um, you know, try to uh, use, the, use the anything, any means that we can help them to find a job. Okay. Oh, I, so this hospital is far away from the many big cities in Taiwan and uh, uh, located in the midpoint of the Rift Valley, the Eastern Rift Valley. Uh, this is the main building of this hospital. Um, it really now about uh, barely 30,000 uh, the, the inhabitants accommodate the multiple ethnic groups, as you said, but it's very interesting and uh, special that this, this uh, this town accommodated another thousand people. They transferred from throughout, transferred from all over Taiwan, who suffered severe the persistent mental illness, and they stayed in my hospital. This hospital used to be a uh, uni veteran hospital before two uh, before the twenty thirty. Now we started it. Um, we started this hospital very uh, from the very uh, humble beginning in nineteen. Uh, 57. Now, the patient in my hospital, they are the most dysfunctional and treatment refractory, but they have multiple needs. And how to satisfy them and with the, I think it's, 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 there's, there, 
are many limitations to satisfy their needs by the, uh, medications, by psychotherapy, or by traditional occup occupational therapies. Now, so for that case, this hospital was the most disgraceful and disadvantaged mental hospital in Taiwan. It almost the unspoken shame in the whole Taiwanese society of psychiatry. Because back then, the 30 years ago, this hospital is a big asylum and it, it looks so strange and weird um, from the background of uh, the institutionalization mainstream. So, but we have to face the problem. So many patients just trapped in a back wall and they cannot return to their community of origin. So, how can we do? Can we build an environment where they can resume normal life and reclaim their dignity beauty? So this is a good question and we needed to answer this question by ourselves. Yeah, I would like to skip this one. You know, uh, in the Western country, they have faced a lot of problems. Yeah, so. So can we have, uh, so can we have, what are the key components of the strategy that can make patient recovery possible in UD Veteran Hospital? Again, I will emphasize, we, we did not look for the literature first because it's not possible to reach this kind of literature. Um, may, I see many, many, um, in many countries, people do a lot of good things, but it's very difficult to publish in English to, to you know, to to uh to describe the, their psychosocial reputation in details. Okay, so we try to answer this question based on our own field studies. Uh, I I wrote this uh, this article in two thousand published this article in two thousand three in the Psychic Surface. So my point is, is the don't go to the extremes either liberal individualism or it utilize authoritarian empiricism. Now, try to take into account the series of your own social cultural relevance in the, you know, the, the context, the social culture context. You have the single authority and, uh, you know, you, you don't need to copy um, any models. You just try to, have, you know, to uh, develop your own know-how to, to, to help the people reintegrate re into the community. Yeah. You can look uh, this uh, articles in uh, by the uh, 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 by the Google. Okay, I think this uh, article is the most popular, and many of them. I sent this article to uh, you before the, the, a couple of weeks ago, so I you, you guys supposed to have read this uh, article before this main seminar. Now, so anything uh, shaped by vision home is where you make it. If they cannot go back to their, their, their home, their hometown, <clears throat> so why not help them to build their home in Yudi? <clears throat> so in the Yudi model, we extend the therapy homeland beyond the walls of the Yudi Veteran Hospital to the Yudi town. So, and this therapy homeland conceptually should be the archstone of the continuous and balanced treatment model. Yeah, like this, uh, this graph. It's, uh, it's a try to keep the whole model balanced and continuous because of the therapeutic homeland. Now, there's a key, four key components and four key strategies. Uh, I'm not going to, to, to talk in details, so just giving you some highlights. Yeah. Uh, I know your hospital is quite similar to my hospital. So you, you, uh, the, your hospital has the, the very, uh, you know, the very good the, the medical service as my hospital. And so you can provide the holistic care for, to your patient. It's very important. And we, not only the inner world, but also the social network of the patient are disrupted by the disorder. So we try to apply the, the principles of intensive case management and the case management especially applied in patient's workplace. Not only keep the patient clinically stable, but also work as a social ties between the patients and, and the community. So 
Through the case management, management the patient can de develop their social connections gradually and gain support from the social network at last. And we do believe that these kind of connections bring about the therapeutic effects. So therapeutic home then is not only in man, but in substance. They, there are a lot of the social connections that happen the day on a daily basis. And vocational reputation, I think it is the math key of the all keys. We have four groups in this program, occupational therapy, and the second, the hospital-based work therapy, and third, the community-based work therapy, and in the, 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 the fourth is the individual placement and support. Now, I will skip to th this slide and to what I say. I do believe for the past decades, I think thoroughly why the, this program become a turn out therapeutic to the patients and we can call this program the therapeutic home med because we provide um, a comprehensive work therapy. Yeah. Work, therapy, work for pay jobs should be regarded as one of the psychiatric treatments in addition to medication, sex therapy, et cetera, et cetera. Work itself has built in incentives, monetary and non-monetary, to encourage the patient to stay in course. But the patients still need ongoing support and on-site job coaching to remain stable in work. And the support should be time unlimited. Low, the intensity may vary along the different periods. Work therapy in Udi, especially community-based, offer the patient not only the opportunity to earn money, but also to build a stable and supportive connection with their employers, employers, families, and co-workers. So the work therapy is not only to do with the exchange between the labor and money, but also has a lot to do with the mutual support the friendship that happened between the patients and you know and their and their employers, even the consumers. The connections result in most of the therapy effects of UE therapy at home end. Most of the case management efforts are focused on the helping the patient learn the work and the social skills and remain stable in those family run small, small business. And Again and again, I do believe um, the therapy effect can, ha can happen in a small business because there's a close, a close friendship, close the relationship that happened uh, on a daily basis compared to the big company. Because in, in Uyli, we have only the family runs for business. So they have interact and work together very closely to each other. And this, uh, this kind of interaction is very helpful to help people to overcome their negative symptoms and cognitive dysfunction. Okay. And the fourth, is, the fourth key is a long-term supported residential program. We know, on, we know only a thin line between family care and family control, between the family permissiveness and family indifference. And the conflict between it happens on a daily basis between the adult patient and their families. I think you have the same experience. So distance in the space can buffer the conflict. So, uh, so we we recommend the supported residential program and with the continuous discipline and supervision that help them build up personal social skills. If uh, many people have visited this program, so now. Okay, um, the long-term supported residential program, there are some features, the high quality of accommodation, the vocation of both focus, empowerment and recovery oriented, integration with the community and the multidisciplinary service team. Long-term and stable, not temporary, nor transient uh, supported residential program, not only halfway house, no way is halfway. We always in somewhere in between. So we'd like to, there is a support of the long-term residential program can definitely consolidate and even enhance the effects of brought about by the previous three components. Now, World Psychiatry, in 2022, there is um, 
uh, uh, meta-analysis is, is a recent evidence say uh, for, uh, about the community-based social intervention for people with severe mental illness. You know, this kind of study is very difficult to implement, but they try their best to, to make the system, system review and narrative synthesis. Now, the conclusion is that there is, uh, there are, that, that only supporting accommodation is evidence proof effective at improving housing stability for homeless people with severe mental illness. And the other one is the supporting employment is effective at improving employment outcomes. And the third one is the family psychoeducation. Yeah. So now, and they also, they also found there is growing evidence to suggest that loneliness is the drive of the poor health and social outcomes. And therefore, any opportunities to support social connection should be valued. And in beauty, the therapeutic homeland, we do believe we help people to, to you know, to uh, have a job in the uh, families around the small business to help them overcome the negative symptom and come dysfunction as well as the loneliness in this modern in this modern society the key strategy now the first one is the seamless connection with the hospital based program now now to avoid the uncertainty of the government subsidized programs which jeopardize the stability of the staff and program all the programs are run by the hospital with its own budget in terms of the human resource and the facilities i think your hospital has a very good start because the, compared to the 30 years uh UD veteran hospital we have a very scarce uh, 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 resources yeah but yeah, and uh, your um, I think your hospital be much more so resourceful than uh, the thirty years ago the uh, the Ventura hospital. Now, because we have it's a seamless connection with the hospital based programs, so all the staff in the hospital outreach to the community. We have the stable and cohesive team, stable relationship and trust between staff and patients sensitive and timeless response to patients' problems. This fact that these features connect with each other closely. Assessment and rotation applied by the same team, for sure, can minimize the problem with the referral and avoid the pace patchworks commonly seen in community reputation programs. The second is that all the components, the key components, work as one service package they should function simultaneously to achieve the maximum effect. So like any one of them often makes all the effort futile, and this futile that lead to the frustration would deeply hurt the morale of the team. And the third one, the strong and ever-growing partnership with the community, especially the partnership with the employers, the family run the small business. So work together with the employers of vocational reputation programs to help the patient in, integrate into the community is the, is the most important feature of this hospital, of this program. And we also have a multidisciplinary team of all responsibilities to make sure the coordination and continuity of the, of a care across time and service. We share the common value and vision to facilitate teamwork and share case to avoid the staff burnout and share the information to help the people time in time in, in time to fix their to the solve their problems. Now so we try to look at my hospital this from from different perspective. It's pretty like the boarding school a boarding breakfast and training for support employment. Yeah. And so if you want to uh, start these programs, just think about this. We, we provide the boarding and breakfast and people have to earn their money for lunch and dinner. And all the training have 
is uh, focus on the embed uh, support employment. So we have a compulsory. We I we suggest the compulsory trial training at training period for the first three months for assessment and support employment. We have ne negotiable calls, diverse job options, flexible work schedule, and reasonable payment comparable to their uh, workload and yield. Yeah. <clears throat> And we also provide a supervisor boarding with peer self governance. And the classrooms for this, uh, this boarding school is the real world workplace in the community with ongoing support and on site job training. Yeah. So if you can, if you can start this program as early as possible and to help the people who just uh, get trouble with the mental illness for, uh, for example the first two years after onset illness because we do believe if we can start this program implement them to the fresh case the first episode or the the young people not you know my patient they, they when they transfer to my my hospital they are already 40 or 50 it's too late it's it's already their lay call it, or the late cause of their illness so if we can start this program from the earlier cause of their uh, of their illness, the 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 effect of which would be much better. Yeah. So to build up the social connections between the patients, their colleagues, employees, the family members, and staff in of the BM and TSC and hospitals as a social ecosystem is a therapeutic home net. So again, I emphasize the social connection in the workplace is the most important. So we, we, as soon as the patient can keep a job for at least six months, they can move on to live with their families and support a housing program. But it depends on the people's condition. But the supported employment with all the key components strategy will last indefinitely. So support employment is the end and also the means to build up the personal social skills and the therapeutic ecosystem as well. Okay, I just skipped this point. Now, I add something new to this um, the speech. We're thinking the mission of occupational therapy in psychiatric reputation. What do you mean by psychiatric reputation? Of, of, in other words, the psychosocial reputation is um, involving this thing. So the approaches and the strategy use the constantly un undergo adjustment and change as film materials and the mass become more refined. Despite the diversity of the practice, you will see that there is agreement about the principles of the psychiatric reputation. For example, person and approach and the strength focus and focus on job and career development. Yeah, I try, try to highlight something. And emphasis on goal related skill training, resource development, and environmental modification, integration of a treatment and reputation service, and ongoing accessible and coordinated service. But how to do this? We can do this um, in very concrete way by by uh, in the compact in the concrete way by you by apply the implement the support employment or work therapy in the broad sense in by work therapy we can apply the, all these principles in the work therapies so psychiatric intervention there's i think there there are many psychiatric reputation interventions but as the world, psych world psychiatrists say, uh, there is uh, only support employment, the supportive housing, and the family psychiatry that ha have, uh, have, have the good evidence approved. Now, occupation. In the very common sense, your occupation is your job, work, or profession. So, an occupation is something that you spend the time doing either for pleasure or because. It needs to be done. 
So occupational therapist, the concern with occupational behavior is concretized as participation in work, personal life skills, learning, leisure, and play. And skill is an essential capacity of human beings and is a vital component of occupation. So people's experience of engagement in occupations influence both their satisfaction with performance and intrinsic motivation. Occupation is engaged in by whole human beings. Not, they may not be reduced to cells or organ system. It's a holistic approach. So, the so-called occupational human is a complex living system that in, interact with multiple environments. Yeah. But <coughs> occupational, uh, occupational science arguments. The critics is that, that the dilemmas of occupational therapy practice. A major co question confronting society is what is the re relationship between human engagement in the daily round activity and the quality of life. The profession may not be fully achieving its rich potential in making a difference in people's lives. So what the reason for this dilemma? The argument is many occupational therapists still practice in hospital and clinics, in which the traditional medical view of illness and disability predominates. With the medical model's priorities concerning being a uh, alleviation of uh, symptoms, it often bring a limitation in focus that does not include occupational engagement of people with their natural context. In Taiwan, many occupational therapists only think the uh, occupational therapy in hospital is their job. But help people to find a job and keep stable in the job is not their job. It's not their profession, and that is the problem. So, and anyone can be the job coach. As I said, we start this program to uh, help the patient find a job. We have no qualified occupational service. We have only uh, a, a few social workers. So there, there were one social worker and the one you know, not qualified occupational therapists. They work together to help people find a job. And back then, 30 years, more than 30 years ago, they played the, they played the role as a job coach to provide the training and support on the job side, to educate the employee about the disabilities, to assist the support employee with the interpersonal relationships, uh, relationship skills on the job side and to assist for health and wellness goals, career planning, decision-making, money management, the transport, transportation, job de development, and carving, et cetera, et cetera. To integrate the vocational sector service, they work as a member of the sector service team. Now, so we have to prioritize uh, the occupational therapy practice in psychiatric reputation. So we try to focus resources on work therapy, including individual placement and support first, not tied up in the hospital. Help the patient learn and practice personal social skills at the workplace, the classrooms, to gain and retain employment. Help the patient develop leisure and play hobby after they get anchored in the job for a long enough time. And work therapy, like an engine, drives the occupational therapy profession as a whole to meet the patient's occupational needs in the community life. So again, I emphasize that work therapy should be the first priority of the occupational therapy. Now, why does psychiatric reputation or work therapy matter? We know the hard cause of a severe the pers persistent mental illness. Uh, no matter schizophrenia or bipolar or the severe the major depressive disorder, the long term, the primary major depressive disorder, the hard call, the, the most difficult part to treat is the neurocognitive dysfunction. And there is no magic pill to remedy the impairment. Don't believe it, the big pharmaceutical companies, they say 
they uh, invent a new drug, new medication to overcome the negative symptom and come this function. We have looked forward for the past three decades uh, and any new inve uh, invention, uh, invention uh, the new drugs can overcome the negative symptom, but we fail. So we have to address the social factors, I have to add uh, to uh, psychosocial factors, the social factors to help people overcome the negative symptom. Yeah. By help them to find the work, uh, find the job in the community. The longer the maintenance, the harder to revert the deterioration the horse. But neuroplasticity, the new finding, the new evidence about neuroplasticity is the focused evidence about the work self indeed the benefits for the mental ill to overcome the neurocognitive dysfunction, including negative symptom and cognitive dysfunction. So, work therapy is actually a systematic approach of training and learning for the mentally ill to overcome the neurocognitive dysfunction. And work therapy can consolidate the goals, values, and principles of psychiatric reputation. Work therapy is an indefinite approach to help the patient devote themselves for lifelong learning and growth that is recovery and transformation. So that's the picture since the 2000, I think this picture took in, I think the 2017, the year before I stepped down the superintendent. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Steve. It's like uh, um, I I want to add one thing. Said uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's the first. It's my first time to give a speech on internet. It's a little bit yes. scary, so okay. I move so fast. So okay. I have to apologize. It's okay. So, back. We don't Okay. So any question? Yeah. Okay, we now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now open the floor for discussion with Dr. Steve. Participant, feel free to type your question in the chat box, on on your microphone and camera to interact directly. Your engagement is key to enriching the conversation and knowledge. Please. Kami persilakan para Bapak Ibu participant untuk mengajukan beberapa pertanyaan. Mungkin kami persilakan. Bisa menggunakan chat box atau dengan menggunakan mikrofon langsung. Oke, okay. kita sudah punya beberapa yang mengangkat tangan. We have a, a raise hand participant, dok. Yang mana dulu ini? Hai, 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 hello, Steve. Thank you for the for the beautiful, I said it, beautiful uh, speech and um, thank you very much. And um, I think through the video that Atwin uh, has shared and also during our visit, I'm sure that uh, everybody here is uh, convinced that you have uh, walked the talk. So, and also all the evidence that you have uh, given to us, all the steps that you have teach, uh, taught us, it is very, um, very amazing to us. As we are here going to start our regimen model in Sumber Porong in Lawang, so I'm always, uh, I would like to ask you uh, one question about how you advocated about this program to the community stakeholders at the first time of uh, when, when you started the program. What were the challenges you had then and uh, how did you face the challenges? Thank you. When we start this program, actually we start from the work therapy. We find we help the people find jobs on the tea plantation. So the challenge is how to, you know, to convince the employees, say, please hire my patient. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And give them the opportunity to try. Yeah. And so the the job to help people remain stable in the in the job is our duties so our challenge is we have to learn how to help them do all the chores you know as an occupation therapist or as the social worker we have no idea in the first place how do people do the house chores 
<laughs> we think it's a bit of common sense, but in the very beginning, the people have a difficult in you know to doing all the chores, all the simple work, even the very simple work. Yeah, so it's a kind of you know a startling, you know, quite startling, scary experience. So, wow, we have to uh, help them to do from the ABC one hundred and one. Yeah. And it's very cold, it's very difficult and time consuming, labor consuming. And sometimes they're very frustrated. So the big challenge is the first one, we convince the employer. And then the challenges began. How to help people remain stable. Yeah. To be, you know, to, to, you know, to be capable, to turn out the capable to do the job. It's your, it's our opportunity, it's our duties, our responsibility to have that. It's not employees' uh, the responsibilities. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, yeah. uh, Steve. I think uh, the other participants also want to ask you more about this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Steve and Dr. Yinian. We invited our colleagues from Vietnam, Mr. or Ms. Dung Nguyen Kak. Would you please open your mic and your camera, please? I think he had been disconnected. Okay. Is there anyone want to discussion with uh, with oh this is Mr. Andy Rosyat, please. Oke, okay, selamat pagi. Selamat pagi, silakan. Iya. Uh, perkenalkan nama saya Andi, saya berasal dari Timika Papua. Wow. Iya, <laughs> saya mungkin agak ada pertama-tama saya bagikan sedikit dulu pengalaman saya juga saya dulu sebenarnya juga itu pengidap skizofrenia cuman alhamdulillah sekarang uh, sudah mengecil itu suara-suara yang saya dengar itu dan sekarang saya sudah bisa beraktivitas kembali seperti semula uh, saya seorang mahasiswa salah satu perguruan tinggi terbuka di Indonesia yang mau saya tanya ini Langsung saja ya, question bahasa Inggris. Ya, apa -apa. Yeah, kan. uh, how much the energy that needed schizophrenic suffer to doing activity again like the other or normal people? What's the effort? Can you say that? Excuse me, can you say that again? Because okay. I think they cannot focus anything except to hearing the mysteriously voice. It's housing. They are energy, their energy runs, runs out just to hear the mysterious voice. I oh. think essential problem that can cause heart doing activity beside difficult focus in environment around them. I think it's the center of problem that need attention. Yeah, I think of all. Yeah, yeah, you know, my hospital, we have the thousand patients. So, but there are, there are only the hundred or 150 people, they can afford the job. They can, they are capable to do the job. And so many people still bothered by the auditor hallucinations. So you have to start from the easy case, the so-called easy case. Yeah. There are many, you know, um, there are many difficulties, and the people facing the many, many difficulties to dealing, uh, many difficult difficulty dealing their audio audio hallucination, the sound around them, and they are so inattentive and distractible, right? So, but you have to try to help the people who are now stable, and they are capable of doing the job, you know. And those people who are still bothered by the symptoms, you have to try to treat them aggressively. Yeah, by any means. Yeah, do, uh, you, do you get my point? Yeah. Now, yes, this, 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 we cannot ap apply implement this program across the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have started from those easy cases. Okay, they are already stable, and we can give the chance, give them the chance to try. Okay. Okay, thank you for 
uh, the, the answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Randy, can I give an additional information about Andy? Yes, yes, yes. please. Actually, Steve, uh, Andy was uh, uh, previously suffering from schizophrenia and currently uh, uh, he is a student and he also made a beautiful batik paintings uh, to support uh, his life. So uh, I'm so happy that uh, he is here with us uh, today. So uh, he is also an example of a a successful patient. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank Great you. Job, Andy. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> you Mr. Uh, Andy, and thank you, Dr. Junior, for uh, more elaborate. Is there any question from another uh, another con participant, maybe from other country, other hospital? I'm invited you to join us to discuss what you what you want to learn about this newly therapeutic homeland. Oh, please, uh, uh, Christina Andriani, would you please open your mic and speak directly to the Steve? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good morning, Mr. Steve. Good morning, Dr. Yuniar. And good morning for the others participants. Uh, my name is Christine. I'm from Panti Karya Asi, uh, one of the, um, what do you call that? The, <laughs> um, a Panti, one of the Pantis in Indonesia. So what you have explained is is like a utopia for all the, um, uh, for all the patients, yeah. So for a utopia, something to reach, but is it possible, <laughs> something like that? So I know that Dr. Yuniar and, and the Rajiman uh, Badiyo Dingningrat has, uh, has got, uh, what is it, a well-established hospital. And I think it's, it's good with it. or the employees stay in, live inside. It's, it's, it's possible to do that, yeah. Um, but how about, can you, can, you, uh, can you explain the management, yeah? What, what organize what get, what structures of organize uh, organizations do you have in your in Yuli establishment because sure. it's very it's very big it's it's really what oh okay what kind of um it's like a factory right it's a big company so what kind of uh, uh um how many patients do you have how many can you explain a bit about your um how many patients do you have there and how many people should be there in your management and something thank you okay right now we have um, now uh, 1700 people you know the patient inpatient but there every day there are 500 people in the occupational therapy program in campus so you have a team a team of my team yeah okay uh, who I, are your I, team I who are yeah. in your team yeah my okay my I, I say my team we have two psychiatrists and two social workers Oops. and two clinical oh. psychologists and I think a dozen occupation therapists to help people remain stable in the community. Okay. Houses of social workers. Two social workers, two okay, social workers. and a dozen occupation therapists, and maybe oh. two, one or two psychiatric nurses and two psychiatrists. Yeah. Wow. This is our team to uh to help people about 200 people remain stable in the workplace and some of them 50 of them live in the supportive housing in the uni town and 100 plus live in the recovery house or you call the hardware house and some of them stay uh, still stay in the in the in the uh, in the ward in the hospital yeah yeah, but there is another 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 team. They provide the occupational therapists and the uh, uh, hospital-based work therapy. 
Yeah, there, there's a dozen people. A dozen people, they are the, most of them are occupational therapists. Um, I see. And uh, um so it's it's it focuses more on the occupational therapists then you've got a lot of occupational therapists yeah but um, our focus actually is work therapy all the occupational therapy you know, the principle and the practice the the focus or the or, or the goal the main goal of the occupational therapy or any kind of therapy is to help people to remain stable in the workplace, in the job. Okay. May I, Even the may job I ask is more? so minimal, so, uh, so minimal, and, uh, you know, but uh, they're just a small business. Yeah. Maybe the couple hours a day, but it's good enough for them to build up a connection. Yeah. With mm -hmm. the community. <laughs> may I ask more? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, please, Miss um, Christine. Yeah. Uh, can you explain a bit about the built-in incentive, monetary? How how would you how would you pay their wages? Because okay. uh, most of patients they are uh, difficult to to work routine in a routine here. Yeah. So, for example, one patient they for example, one patient they work in um, um, the head a head shop. The, in the in the morning for one hour to open the shop and uh, one hour in the afternoon to help the close the shop so they are paid hourly perhaps you know it depends on it depends on that it, it's a negotiable and negotiation between our job coach and the employer say and uh, the workload you know the workload how much the the people can work and they pay for them yeah okay. so what's it's always average, negotiable what's the average uh working hours for them in a day uh different people have a different hours <laughs> they just yeah. they cannot work routine routine yeah, yeah that's why right. for them to keep a job every day so some of them just two hours a day some of them have eight hours a day yeah yeah mm. so it's quite flexible you say the community uh, is your establishment here. I mean, a part of the community. You are in in the middle of the community, or you are separate establishment. No, no, in the community, right in the community, in the so market, how? in the street, on the street. Yeah, over the the Yuli town. Yeah. How do you educate? How do you educate the community to accept them? You don't need to educate them. You just say, give me a chance to try and direct the contact, help people understand that the patient is not so scary. <laughs> they, are the, they look quite normal, right? And mm -hmm. they, our job is to help people to get opportunity and also get enough time to get along with the employers uh, employers family and their consumers mm -hmm. and yeah and gradually they understand the say hey this guy is quite normal yeah so mm -hmm. try your best to help people the opportunity to get the opportunity to contact the the people you know in the, the, their neighbors the neighborhood directly okay so the the job is not the end the job is just a means the measure to help people to contact mm -hmm. the so-called normal person <laughs> yeah so it means i mean uh back again you want to them to have environment to resume their normal life reclaim their dignity so uh they have needs to usually the patients have needs they want to get married what's yeah. happening there what's your what's Heaven. your yeah. Yeah. What do you have to do? They have uh, the, you know, they have a sex need and something, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Many needs. And uh, when, so? they, yeah. And when they, you know, go into the community, they all, someone, they are so smart. They can find a way to find, you know, find a way to you know, satisfy their sexual need. And uh, many of the schizophrenia 
to my knowledge, to my experience, it's very hard for them to build up the stable and uh, intimate, intimate relationship. But mm -hmm. the people who uh, suffered from the mood disorders, they, are, they have some problem with this. So you, they need some counseling. Yeah, mm -hmm. to protect themselves and, you know, and to protect, you have the safe sex uh, mm -hmm. with each other. Yeah. Is the, are you encouraged we, we, them we to are, get married? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Some, sorry. some of them get married, married, but some of them, but <laughs> nowadays, they don't, they don't think marry, get married is a good idea. <laughs> okay, that's why. <laughs> that's my question. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. So, thank you yeah. for your questions. Thank you. I think someday, I think someday we need to go to visit uh, Yuli, Christian, yes. so you can get answers for mm -hmm. your uh, questions. <laughs> because uh, Christian is running a sheltered uh, home for uh, patients with schizophrenia that cannot be um, taken care of by the family. So uh, she works very close with our uh, hospital. So. Um, I'm happy that uh, he, she is uh, joining the program, the webinar, and asking you so many questions, Steve. Thank you very much for answering. Yeah, I, I have to apologize so that because the, the time is so limited, I cannot describe in details what yeah. happened. Thank but you. I think the point is that just try your best in your own social cultural context, help people to contact the, the neighborhoods. Yes. Get along with them. Yes. Yeah, perhaps the job the work therapy is a good idea, perhaps not for your for for your situation. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So are the participants okay. for your information, Steve and Uli model in, uh, start from the from the neighborhood. They yeah. they they are networking with neighborhood neighborhood like uh, uh, car washing and other local employment. Business. Yes, yeah. and local business. Thank you, Dr. Junior. And I would like to invite Dr. Lohargo Kembaren. He is a psychiatrist from Marzuki Mahdi Bogor, right? Okay, Doc, please open your mic and ask a question. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, Steve, for the wonderful presentation. I learned so much about the Yuli model, about the psychosocial rehabilitation. Uh, I'm uh, Lahargo from Marjuki Mahdi Mental Hospital. So I just want to ask about the residential supported. How you uh, build this kind of uh, supporting to the people with mental illness? Because in in Bogor, in Indonesia, we have a halfway house, but it's still in the hospital. How to make a bridging from the hospital base to the community base? Thank you, Steve. Okay. Uh, I try to answer. You know, in the first place, we start this program. The patient they still stay in hospital, but we we try to help them and brought them out of hospital beyond the walls to the communities. So we still have the same team and we provide the outreach the service for them. And even now the recovery house still in the campus, the main campus in the other hospital. I think that if I, I just I say that it's pretty like pretty like the boarding school. The boarding school, do you think, look at, not hospital, but the boarding school, that boarding school, the dorm, I think it's a good bridge between hospital and the community. Just look around, look at a different angle, different perspective. You provide a accommodation, not back to the family, not back to just still in the house, in the supportive house program, the dorm, and it, and you you provide all the services like said you know the, the medication we still watch for watch for the medication and uh, help them to discipline themselves yeah provide some rules and uh, provide some social skill training in the dorm in the supported housing program in the recovery house this kind of bridge and then find help them find a job 
in the in the in the in the in the country in the neighborhood you know so um perhaps you have not you um in taiwan i always encourage people say you can open one wall you don't need to build a new new building a new house you just open your one wall and turn them out inside out you know turn the world inside out the like the open world and they it, 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 the the world can can work pretty like the dawn did, did you get my point do you get my point okay so that is a bridge one last question is there any uh a community mental center in uh, Taiwan because in Indonesia all program about the mental health is uh, included in the public health center. So I just want to ask uh, about the community mental health center. Uh, community reputation center, mental health center. Mental health center. Yes, community mental health center. Uh, the central government is trying to build up the, the build establish the many community mental health center around the Taiwan, and so there is uh, I think uh, psychologist the social worker is the the basic uh, staff uh, staff requirement, but I have no idea how how many people in the, in each the mental health community mental health center, but yeah. Okay, is there any question, Dr. Hargo? Thank you. Terima Thank kasih, you. moderator. Terima Thank kasih, you. Dr. Yuniar. Dengan senang hati. Okay, okay for the next, uh, someone asking from, oh, this is uh, far away from Cambodia. We invited uh, Miss Soline Tsao. Would you like oh, to open your mic and open your camera, please? Hi, sorry, Nat. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Steve. Um, greeting everyone, Wendy and Dr. Yunir. I actually have a question, follow-up question. Like, um, it's still, um, I'm still curious about how you actually build a seamless connection regarding your um, hospital-based programs. Like, back to 30 years ago, um, how do you come up with this agreement that all of this budget would be um, within your hospital? And um, what would be your key of the key in maintaining this agreement and also like um, building such a stable and cohesive team? That would be my question. Thank you. We 30 years ago, we started this program secretly. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah, just um, um, outside the radar of the administrative uh, you know, administrative, uh, yeah, administration. Yeah, we just started this program saying, we feel so unsatisfied, we feel deeply unsatisfied with the situation the people face and they trapped in the backyard. So the social worker and the not qualified the occupation service, they do this enthusiastically to use their own personal connection to help people in hospital and also in community the personal connection to convince the people say we can try a very small stuff on very small scale they are very brave they were very brave yeah to help people to find a job in the tea plantation and Actually, they have no idea what would happen in front of them. Yeah. And about a few years later, things turn around. The qualified psychiatrist, psychiatrist one, what I am one of them, came to this hospital and we support, officially supported this program. So we break down all the disagreement say we endorse this program and now you have the very good opportunity because you guys psychiatry you can endorse this program by yourself yeah 
And back then, when they started this program since 1988, 89, there was no qualified psychiatrist. No one support them officially. Yeah. But, you know, just a couple of years ago, a, a couple of years later, uh, the things turned around. You know? So, certain that, don't be, you know, don't, don't be scared. Try your best. Go ahead. Yeah. And see where it turned around. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there was always ups and downs, always disagreement with each other. That is but great. When we, when, but when we find the people getting better, better off, the patient getting better off in the community, that that is a good story for them to convince the people say this is a good, this is the right check for people. Yeah, for the hospital, for the staff, for the patients. Yeah. Did you get, uh, do you get my point? I do. Okay. Thank you. It's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah, it's very hard to get kick, the kick start. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, Lynette. This is a, a quite a challenging, uh, right, for us, right? And I'm also invited our colleagues from Thailand, from Nan Hospital. Ms. Tarutaya, and also a few colleagues from Cyclism Thailand, they're also joining today. Would you like, please, uh, give a question or want to discuss with us? Or our Indonesian colleagues, maybe you want to, if you want to ask a question, would you please raise hand? Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, apabila Bapak Ibu masih memiliki pertanyaan atau beberapa yang ingin didiskusikan dengan Dr. Steve dari Taiwan, kami mengundang Anda untuk mengacungkan atau memberikan raise hand agar dapat kami uh, unmute. Dan kami juga terbuka apabila Bapak Ibu ingin menanyakan segala sesuatu tentang dalam bahasa Indonesia. Panitia di sini akan standby dan berusaha untuk membantu Bapak Ibu atau menginterpretasikan Bapak Ibu semuanya. I'm quite, I'm quite sure that everybody here is thinking about how to apply this uh, program in our hometown, right? <laughs> so everybody is busy thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get started because we, you know, we have no, back then we had no opportunity to have this kind of seminar. Nobody tell, tell us how to do and, um, and um, you know, and uh, a lot of things are uh, just ahead of us and uh, other difficulties. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, don't be scared. Don't be yes. scared. Yeah. Thank you for the encouragement. I think we are going to start here, Randy and uh, Atwin and Angita. And um, uh, we are going to tell Steve if we have something to ask uh, during the journey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Steve. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Uh, all the participants, we, we would like to invite you to the photo session. We would, like to, we would like to ask you to open your camera for all together for the Excuse, excuse me. Uh, yes. I'm curious. Are the Professor Isa is still out there? Is there any comment or critics from him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would like to. Uh, to Professor Mohan Isaac, are you still with us? Yeah, this morning uh, he said that he, is, he has another uh, program. So, yeah, yeah he would uh, silently leave this uh, webinar. <laughs> so, but I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we would like to start to screen grabbing and uh, Group photo for all of us. So, you all, you all are welcome to visit the, 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 the my hospital. Okay. Yes, we will. Again, <laughs> again. <laughs> yes, we surely will. <laughs> okay. Okay, we we'll like to start the photo session. One, two, three. Give your big smile. And one, two, three, another pose, maybe. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much for all of you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. much. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, very much. Thank you, thank you to the Thank you. And Arkun to Solinat Sao, our uh, colleagues from Cambodia, and yeah. our other engaged participants. <coughs> Moving on, we have a speaker from Rajuman Dr. Rajuman Widyodini Rat State Mental Hospital. This is our psychiatrist, Dr. Anna Purnamasari, who will elaborate on the Rajuman Psychosocial Rehabilitation Program, and she gained a psychiatrist education from Erlanga University class of 2019. She also was she was a chief of intensive psychiatric care unit at our hospital, chief of psychosocial and psychosocial rehabilitation from 2017-2022, and she also was a chief of psychiatric work in 2022 until the March of 2023. And I would like to invite our ping lady, Dr. Anna. Are you joining with us? Hello, Dr. Anna. Are you joining with us? Belum. Sorry, we have to wait a little bit more longer for the doctor Anna to join us. Due to technical matter, we would like to apologize to all of you. We have to a little bit more longer to make the Dr. Anna Purnamasari psychiatrist to join us today. But a few programs he will she will elaborate for us about what we have done in our hospital and also what we will do in to the next hospital to the next years because we already sent to the Yuli to I'm sorry, to give uh, experience the psychosocial rehabilitation, but in the community setting. Uh, hello, Dr. Anna, are you joining with us? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear, but we, I can see your camera on. The camera or in this space, okay. <laughs> okay, hi, everyone. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, professors, seniors, uh, colleges, and everyone who joined the international webinar in the commemoration of Indonesia's National Health Day 2023. Uh, I would like to share the screen. Hmm. 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 Okay, is it uh, can First, the first slide. The first slide. Yes. 
Oke, okay. uh, I'm sorry we had the trouble. Oke, okay, thank you thank for. You. Oh ya. Yes. Halo. Okay. Thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, to share with you about psychosocial rehabilitation program at Dr. Ajiman Widyo Dinirat Lawang Mental Hospital. Hospital and Community Based Rehabilitation. Oke. Okay. Uh, share screen-nya not yet. Okay. I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Ana Purnama Sukianti. I am a psychiatrist in Dr. Rajiman Wedioding Ratlawang Mental Hospital. Uh, and I will uh, let you know about uh, my hospital. Our hospital, Dr. Rajiman Widyo Dinirat Lawang Mental Hospital, is located in East Java. Oh, the 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 picture is uh, not contrast, okay? Okay. Uh, East Java or Java is one of the thousand of islands in Indonesia. And this is the position of our hospital in Indonesian map, okay? Uh, geographically, it is located in Sumber Porong Village, the mountainous area, and is surrounded by Mount Arjuno and Mount Sumeru. So the temperature around the hospital is uh, quietly cool, making it very comfortable yeah, to uh, a, as a place to live in and care for patients. Agriculture is one of the jobs of local residents besides culinary business. Uh, grocery stores and as office workers. Uh, our hospital was built by Dutch in um, in colonial period in 1902 because of 121 years interaction with mental health hospital. Most of people in Sumber Porong Village are familiar with patients with mental illness. Our hospital is also uh, is being tertiary referral mental hospital from some area in East Java and East Indonesia. That's make uh, that's what makes our motivation to improve our services, uh, including rehabilitation. And we now create comprehensive rehabilitation program reaching the community. Okay, uh, we have uh, our hospital has uh, psychiatric and medical holistic services like Dr. Steve uh, uh, says before. The services provided are not only mental services but also physical health services and supporting services such as laboratories and radiology so that if needed there is no need to transfer patient to another hospital. We have experience about Uh, when uh, we have a uh, patient suffer from physical condition or disease uh, that re and require them to uh, get uh, a physical care, uh, uh, further physical care, often general hospital uh, have uh, difficult to uh, accepting them because of their behavior. So that makes us to uh, 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 give the medical holistic holistic services. We have um, okay. we have specialist doctors, psychiatrists, uh, psychiatric consultant, uh, child and adolescent geriatric and forensic internist. We have internist consultant in geriatric, neurologist, surgeons, anesthesiologist, otorinolaryngologist, and head and neck surgery, radiologist, clinical pathologist, physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist, and other profession, general, uh, general 
uh, practitioner, dentist, clinical psychologist, speech therapist, physiotherapist, nurse and dental health nurse specialist, occupational therapist, nutritionist, clinical pharmacy, social worker, and then public health educator and promoter. Okay. Uh, next, let's go to uh, psychosocial rehabilitation program. Uh, psychosocial rehabilitation is a uh, terminology for rehabilitation for people with mental disorder. Uh, in our hospital, we have four stages. Stage one is occupational therapy, stage two, stage two, pre vocational -voc rehabilitation. Stage three, vocational rehabilitation, and set stage four is shelter workshop, uh, like supported employment. Uh, since around the 1990s, the fourth stage has not been included in uh, our uh, rehabilitation activity because the number of the patient care days is decreasing, and there is not not enough time to carry out uh, while the patient is being admission. But in the future, we will revive this stage for patients who have been discharged from our hospital, and we will arrange this activity with community. And psychosocial rehabilitation in our hospital, uh, managed by multidisciplinary approach, including psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, nurse, occupational therapists, social worker, and instructor. This is for chart of psychosocial rehabilitation program in our hospital. We start with the uh, patient being admission in the acute ward. In the acute ward, the rehabilitation activities cannot be carried out because uh, patient condition is not being uh, stable. Uh, the goal of uh, treatment in the acute ward is to, in, to reduce the intensity of uh, psychiatric symptoms. And when they become too uh, stable, they will move to uh, intermediate ward. Uh, and uh, and this, uh, in this ward, in this ward uh, they will uh, begin rehabilitation activities. Uh, the, first, uh, the first time, uh, a psychiatrist may be uh, um, make a recommendation to um, to the multidisciplinary team to select a uh, passion uh, and uh, uh, regarding their suitability for participating in rehabilitation activities. And a patient uh, would be hospitalized in uh, about two weeks after that, they must be discharged from our hospital. They are asked to come to the outpatient clinic after seven days to pick up a month of medication. And when they are in outpatient clinic, they they can uh, join or they can uh, get advice from a psychiatrist to take part in rehabilitation activity in daycare activities. Then a patient who have taken part in daycare rehabilitation uh, activities and maybe patient from community like uh, from a home, shelter home in uh, uh, Miss, Mrs. Christine, maybe can join in community-based work uh, therapy activities after an assessment with uh, assessment uh, that carry out by the team. Uh, this uh, there is uh, there are uh, our picture about uh, vocational uh, rehabilitation in our hospital. Uh, we have sewing class. In the sewing class, uh, the rehabilitant uh, may uh, have a trained uh, skill for make a pattern. 
and then cut the fabric and uh, sewing it into clothes, uh, pillowcases, or any handicrafts. And we have uh, making salted egg. In making salted egg class, uh, a lot of uh, activities can done in uh, this uh, class. Uh, and uh, the, the, the uh, every step uh, is uh, train uh, their cognition, train their motor activity, and uh, also communication. Uh, in farming uh, activity or a uh, uh, farming class, we not only uh, grow uh, vegetable or fruit, but also cultivate mushroom. And we have cooking class and then selling class in uh, Toko Kita. Toko Kita means our shop in Indonesia. Uh, in 2017, we built a community-based work therapy in Wonosari Blended Village. Uh, these activities is done uh, 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 because of uh, our uh, ex-patient who free from Pasung. Pasung is a restriction uh, for, for uh, activity, uh, for, uh, a restriction and activity uh, of patient uh, carried out by the family which is uh, uh, placing the chain in uh, feet or hands. Now uh, the uh, uh, the patient uh, the past of uh, the past patient is no uh, is there is no anymore in uh, in that village. Uh, currently uh, the activity is uh, producing doormats Duster and lately, we also want to develop plastic production production there. Uh, when we uh, when we uh, thought about produce uh, plastic, we always coordination with Rumah Kinasi, with uh, Mr. Eddy. In the third uh, presentation, we we will uh, tell a story about Rumah Kinasi. Rumah Kinasi Foundation is a privately owned community-based work therapy for disabled patients, not only for mental disorder. And next, we will work together with Rumah Kinasi to manage community-based work therapy in our hospital in Lawang. We have also supported housing. Uh, it's called Rumahku, or it means my home in Indonesia. Uh, supported housing, uh, is built uh, around 2019. Now, uh, it is uh, for a dormitory for students who join rehabilitation activity in daycare. But next, we want to create or uh, expand the uh, function of uh, Rumahku for a house for members who work in our community-based work therapy. Uh, take home message from uh, uh, my presentation is uh, Dr. Rajiman with your Tawang Mental Hospital has holistic services for psychiatry and medical health, and uh, we have to we have a hospital and community based rehabilitation. Uh, that's all of uh, our my uh, sharing about uh, psychosocial rehabilitation today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Randy. Thank you very much, Dr. Yunya. Dr. Anna, for the providing us the with in, insight and to the Rajiman Psychosocial Rehabilitation Program. Okay, for the next session, we have a distinguished speaker from Bhakti Kinasih Mandiri Foundation, Mr. Edi Cahyono who has played a crucial role in helping people with mental illness to find employment through the creation of Batik Ciprat. He helped a lot of people with mental illnesses in his neighborhood to regain their dignity. By his wonderful networking skills and, he, and his sincere heart, Mr. Eddie and team start from the small step into the big and global scope. 
Rumah Kinasi has joining World Expo in 2022 in Dubai and also cooperate with big company from Singapore. And recently, they joining a sustainability sustainable trade for global eco resilience and mr eddie actually joined us with us in this room but surprisingly he and her team prepare a video to show you his inspirational act i would like to invite to mr eddie hello mr eddie hello thank you mr randy yuka okay thank you Time uh, yours, mr. ladies and gentlemen i am eddie Sayono, the founder of Patik nasi mandiri foundation it's an now for me to join this webinar and share about community rehabilitation. Rumah Kinase located in Bitar Jensi, East Java, Indonesia. We have stood for five year, for five years in Rumah Kinase, and this moment has 59 capable folk and friends. 70% are male and this person female with various disability and more than 60 percent are mentally disabled up to now for about 20 developed friends has successfully become independent and finally return back into their homes the rehabilitation that we conduct is a continuous rehabilitation from the medical rehabilitation our machinasi bring an independent principle in the activity of providing facilities for the developed people to be productive and functioning as normally in society. So we are trying to build a small community that support bringing back social function and economy from our developed friend. And to know more about us, please check this video on. This is not about the weaknesses of women. This is not about people's limitation. And this is not about incompetency. This is all about them. People who are often being marginalized. They are incredible, strong, and inspirational for me. They are really special. Most people said they are different, whereas they have no choice to born imperfect, being unseen and look unreal. But it's different here. Boisterous laughter, sharing together, a shelter to shout any thoughts, become a home that see them more heartedly, give equal chance through national heritage that is limitless. Kasih merupakan yayasan rehabilitasi sosial bagi para penyandang disabilitas dan orang dengan gangguan jiwa. Berada di Desa Siraman, Kecamatan Kesamben, Kabupaten Titar, memiliki keinginan untuk memberi wadah bagi kelompok yang termarginalkan, 
agar dapat kembali berbau di masyarakat dengan bekal sosial dan kewirausahaan. Rumah Kinasi telah menerima berbagai macam disabilitas seperti hambatan penglihatan, hambatan pendengaran, hambatan intelektual, hambatan fisik, autis, dan hambatan ganda. Sedangkan, untuk gangguan kejiwaan, Yayasan ini telah menerima beberapa macam gangguan seperti depresi, ansieti, schizofrenia, dan amnesia. Hampir 60 klien telah menjadi bagian keluarga rumah kinasi dari seluruh Indonesia. Yayasan rumah kinasi telah berbadan hukum sejak tahun 2019. Dan berjalannya waktu, kami terus memperbaiki diri menjadi lebih baik hingga saat ini kami telah terakreditasi. Rumah Kinasi bertujuan melaksanakan rehabilitasi sosial, penyandang disabilitas, dan ODGJ secara mandiri. Dengan memberikan keterampilan yang bernilai ekonomis dengan difasilitasi dan pendampingan. Hasilnya, di samping memperoleh bimbingan, mereka juga memperoleh kesempatan kerja dan penghasilan. Rumah Kinasi memiliki adanya indikator keberhasilan yakni 1. Memfasilitasi masyarakat dan berbagai pihak berkepentingan dapat melaksanakan rehabilitasi sosial penyandang disabilitas dan orang dengan gangguan jiwa secara swadaya 2. Menghantarkan penyandang dan keluarga dapat menciptakan lingkungan yang promotif bagi tumbuh kembangnya, kemandirian penyandang disabilitas dan orang dengan gangguan jiwa 3. Penyandang disabilitas dan orang dengan gangguan jiwa mampu melakukan aktivitas kehidupan sehari-hari, keterampilan, dan usaha ekonomi produktif secara mandiri sesuai potensinya. Demi terciptanya indikator keberhasilan, maka terdapat beberapa persyaratan jika ingin ditempatkan di rumah kinasi. Hal yang wajib dilakukan ialah asesmen. Asesmen dilakukan pada tahap awal penerimaan calon klien. Dikarenakan masing-masing individu memiliki latar belakang yang berbeda, maka untuk pemulihan pun masing-masing individu membutuhkan penanganan yang berbeda. Bagi setiap klien yang ingin menjadi bagian dari rumah kinasi, harus memenuhi syarat dasar, berupa data diri, KK, KTP, kartu vaksin, kartu KIS, kartu pemeriksaan psikolog dan psikiater, kartu pemeriksaan kesehatan. Setelah data diri sudah memenuhi syarat, maka hal selanjutnya yang dapat dilakukan adalah melakukan sesi wawancara yang dilakukan dengan pihak keluarga maupun pengrujuk yang mengetahui keadaan klien sehari-hari. Hal tersebut ditujukan untuk mengetahui keadaan terkini klien. Jika dari hasil asesmen tersebut, klien menunjukkan hasil yang sesuai persyaratan, maka dapat langsung dilakukan tindak lanjut, yakni melakukan pengisian formulir dan tanda tangan persetujuan orang tua maupun pengrujuk dengan pihak rumah kinasi bermatrai. Hal ini dilakukan sebagai bentuk pihak keluarga telah mengikuti seluruh peraturan sehingga klien menjadi tanggung jawab rumah kinasi dengan masa rehabilitasi selama 6 bulan. Proses pendaftaran hingga masa rehabilitasi di rumah kinasi tidak dipungut biaya apapun. Setelah menjadi bagian dari rumah kinasi, maka kini klien diberikan pemenuhan kebutuhan dasar seperti 1. Makan tiga kali sehari dengan kebutuhan gizi yang cukup. Dua, untuk kebersihan, mereka diajarkan untuk dapat membersihkan dirinya sendiri meskipun masih dalam pemantauan. Tiga, klien laki-laki diberi fasilitas potong rambut dua bulan sekali. Asrama 
laki-laki dan perempuan yang dipisah beserta toilet yang bersih. 5. Fasilitas kesehatan satu bulan sekali berupa pemeriksaan kesehatan dengan mendatangkan ahli medis profesional dan bekerja sama dengan UPT Puskesmas terdekat. Pemeriksaan klinik jiwa satu bulan sekali di Puskesmas. 5. Pemeriksaan psikologi seluruh keluarga rumah kinasi yang dilakukan tiga bulan sekali dengan mendatangkan psikolog profesional atas kerjasama dengan Dinas Sosial Kabupaten Militar. Setelah terpenuhinya kebutuhan dasar, seluruh klien di rumah kinasi juga diberikan fasilitas berupa program pembelajaran yang difungsikan untuk mengembalikan kembali ke berfungsian otak, memberikan stimulus dalam perkembangan sel-sel otak berupa program pembelajaran yang difungsikan untuk mengembalikan kembali ke berfungsian otak, memberikan stimulus dalam perkembangan sel-sel otak, dan juga merecall ingatan yang selama ini mungkin terlupakan. Atas hasil asesmen yang telah dilakukan di awal, maka didapatkan berbagai macam hasil penilaian yang akan dijadikan acuan dalam memberikan stimulus kepada masing-masing individu. Program yang diberikan rumah kinasi berupa pendidikan dan keterampilan. 1. Pendidikan informal Ditujukan bagi klien yang tidak pernah sekolah sama sekali maupun yang putus sekolah untuk dapat kembali belajar pembelajaran dasar seperti baca tulis berhitung. Selain itu, juga diberikan pembelajaran dasar yang dibutuhkan saat terjun langsung di masyarakat seperti pengenalan waktu, pengenalan uang, bina diri, serta komunikasi. Kegiatan ini dilakukan empat kali seminggu yakni setiap hari Senin sampai dengan hari Kamis dari jam 10 sampai jam 1 siang oke sangat dua pendidikan vokasional ditujukan bagi klien yang masih dalam usia sekolah dalam bentuk persiapan saat terjun ke dunia kerja serta bagi klien yang belum pernah membatik sama sekali maka pembelajaran vokasional diberikan untuk tahap pengenalan cara membuat batik di setiap prosesnya Kegiatan ini dilakukan 4 kali seminggu yakni setiap hari Senin sampai dengan Kamis dari jam 10 sampai jam 1 siang Tiga, Pendidikan Keagamaan Diberikan kepada seluruh klien yang berada di yayasan dan beragama Islam untuk dapat kembali mendekatkan diri kepada sang pencipta dengan kembali sholat, belajar mengaji, serta mengenal huruf hijaiyah yang disesuaikan pada masing-masing kemampuan klien. Kegiatan pendidikan keagamaan dilakukan tiga kali seminggu setiap malam Jumat, malam Sabtu, dan malam Minggu. Bagi klien yang beragama selain Islam, hanya akan diantarkan ke rumah ibadah sesuai kebutuhan dan kepercayaan masing-masing. Empat, keterampilan. Keterampilan yang diberikan di rumah kinasi yang utama adalah pembuatan batik. Yang diajarkan dalam keterampilan membatik ini ada berbagai macam, yakni dari mulai pembuatan batik tulis yang menggunakan canting, batik sibori, tai-dai, dan berbagai macam metode pembuatan Meskipun ada berbagai macam keterampilan Namun di rumah kinasi memiliki fokus utama Dan memang dijadikan kekhasan sendiri Yakni keterampilan membuat batik ciprat Batik ciprat sendiri merupakan batik yang khas dibuat oleh para penyandang disabilitas Batik ciprat merupakan produk pertama yang dihasilkan oleh rumah kinasi Yang kemudian terus berinovasi dan juga dimodifikasi dengan motif yang berbeda-beda. Produk batik ciprat rumah kinasi dapat disesuaikan berdasarkan jenis kain, warna, motif, dan ukuran kain. Disebut batik ciprat karena polanya memang tidak beraturan. Seperti rintik hujan yang nyiprat, titik putih, garis-garis menyebar tidak beraturan, ada juga yang menyemburat kemana-mana, termasuk serupa air genangan. Pemilihan pembuatan batik ciprat dikarenakan batik tersebut memang khas dibuat oleh para disabilitas. Batik ciprat sangat mudah dibuat 
bagi para klien karena tidak membutuhkan skill yang terlalu rumit. Proses rehabilitasi menggunakan media pembuatan batik ciprat dirasa cocok karena pembuatannya dapat melatih klien untuk bersosialisasi. Bahkan, ketika klien sedang memiliki emosi terpendam, dapat disalurkan dengan cara mewarna maupun menciprat dengan malam. Proses keterampilan batik ciprat tidak hanya terpaku pada proses produksi, tetapi mereka juga dilibatkan dalam marketingnya, seperti pada saat pameran diadakan. Pengembalian fungsi sosial diberikan berupa pemberian kesempatan pada saat berbagai kegiatan seperti ini. 1. Keikutsertaan dalam terjun langsung ke masyarakat saat kerja bakti membersihkan lingkungan. 2. Keikutsertaan seperti acara karnaval desa dengan memberikan berbagai macam keterampilan. 3. Keikutsertaan dalam kegiatan pameran penjualan batik di berbagai acara dan di berbagai kota. 4. Keikutsertaan dalam kegiatan fashion show yang dilakukan di berbagai acara dan di berbagai kota. Hal ini dimaksudkan untuk menumbuhkan rasa percaya diri dan juga rasa dimanusiakan sebagai individu di masyarakat. Meskipun terlihat sepele, hal seperti ini sangat berpengaruh pada timnya rasa dibutuhkan, sehingga sifat malu dan tidak percaya diri dapat memudar, dan tergantikan oleh rasa bangga atas dirinya sendiri. Terdapat kejadian yang mengharukan, yakni salah satu klien gangguan jiwa yang menangis penuh rasa halu dan bangga saat mengikuti kegiatan karnaval hingga banyak yang mengucap berfoto bersama satu kalimat yang tidak pernah terlupakan saya senang banyak yang mengajak saya foto bersama sebelumnya saya tidak pernah terlihat oleh siapapun rasa bangga yang ada dalam diri klien atas keberhasilan dirinya sendiri akan terus dikembangkan dalam proses rehabilitasi di rumah kinasi kami akan terus memantau masing-masing klien terkait perubahan yang dialaminya selama masa rehabilitasi berlangsung setiap tiga bulan sekali perkembangan klien selalu dilihat dan dicatat dalam sebuah rapor penilaian rapor penilaian yang diberikan merupakan tindak lanjut dari hasil asesmen awal yang dilakukan sebelum masuk ke yayasan hal-hal yang dinilai dalam proses penilaian berupa sikap klien atas dirinya sendiri seperti kebersihan diri kerajinan dalam melaksanakan ibadah kedisiplinan dan lain-lain kemudian terdapat penilaian klien terhadap teman lainnya sesama klien dan pendamping dapat berupa kedisiplinan cara bersosialisasi bertanggung jawab atas tugas kelompok dan lain-lain dan yang paling penting dalam penilaian ini ialah penilaian diri kalian terhadap kegiatan di masyarakat yakni bersosialisasi dan kemampuan diri dalam segi sosial dan ekonomi dalam berkegiatan Seluruh klien yang menjadi tanggung jawab kami selain diberikan penilaian, mereka juga diberikan perlindungan. BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan 2 program sebagai bentuk tanggung jawab rumah kinasi untuk seluruh klien yang diberikan keterampilan. BPJS Ketenaga Kerjaan ini kami biarkan setiap bulannya secara rutin. Hasil karya keterampilan batik ciprat dari klien dikayakan sehingga seluruh klien pun sudah dapat dikatakan sebagai pekerja disabilitas dan bukan hanya sebatas klien yayasan yang membuat karya sehingga hal tersebutlah yang mendasari kami untuk memberikan perlindungan tersebut dari hasil penjualan karya batik mereka pun juga diberikan royalti setiap bulannya berdasarkan lembar batik yang mereka hasilkan hasil dari membuat batik itu pun bervariasi bahkan klien di tempat kami berhasil membeli motor secara cash tidak hanya motor banyak hasil yang telah mereka raih atas sebuah kerja kerasnya banyak keinginan terpendam mereka yang kini dapat mereka beli keinginan saat kecil yang dahulu tidak bisa dimiliki saat ini sudah berada di tangan berbagai macam keinginan telah tercapai 
motor, sapi, baju baru, playstation, radio, bahkan santer. Tidak perlu barang mewah, tapi sangat berharga dan dapat membuat bahagia dan bangga. Karena mereka dapat membelinya atas hasil kerja kerasnya sendiri. Atas apa yang kini mereka telah raih, hal tersebut menunjukkan bahwa mereka masih dapat menunjukkan adanya motivasi, adanya keinginan untuk dapat berhasil, adanya rasa untuk kembali mendapatkan haknya sebagai manusia yang berdiri dengan kakinya sendiri. Tugas kita adalah mendampingi, bukan menghakimi. Rumah sakit bukanlah sebuah akhir. Pasca rehabilitasi medis, keluarga dan masyarakatlah yang kembali berperan. Menempatkan mereka pada posisi yang tepat, maka mereka akan kembali bangkit. Tugas masyarakatlah yang kini menjadi sangat penting. Memanusiakan manusia akan memupuk rasa kepercayaan diri mereka yang selama ini terpendam. Rumah kinasi, rumah yang memberi kasih. Tidak hanya sebuah yayasan rehabilitasi sosial, tapi... Kami juga membentuk sebuah lingkungan baru Lingkungan kecil penuh dengan harapan Langkah demi langkah kami mulai Bagaimana menciptakan masyarakat kecil yang mendukung proses pengembalian fungsi sosial Untuk keberlangsungan hidup disabilitas dan orang dengan gangguan jiwa ke depannya Rumah Kinasi Life No One Behind Thank you ladies and gentlemen Before ending, let me present a few slides. The following are the fabric they pro produce. Apart from batik, uh, they also produce various products. For example, For example, back mukena eksentra, and here are several agencies that use batik uniform by rumah kinase. Halo Sobat Kinasi, udah penasaran gak sih? Ini dandan cantik-cantik dan ganteng-ganteng banget pada mau ngapain? Jadi guys, Rumah Kinasi berkesempatan untuk jadi pengisi acara dalam gelar Wastra Fashion Show Disabilitas pada kegiatan Investment Service Day atau ISD tahun 2023. Bersama dengan Gusting Kabupaten Blitar, tim Fashion Show Rumah Kinasi berhasil membuat suasana acara Cara menjadi semakin meriah dan penuh haru tentunya. That is all for me. Thank you for watching our video. I would like to apologize if there is a mistake. I hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much, Mr. Eddie Chayono, for sharing us a beautiful video and heart-touching experience in helping people with mental illness in, the sur in his surrounding area. As we approach us the end of the program, we open the floor for a question and answer and direct it toward our last two speaker, Dr. Anna and Mr. Eddie Chayono. We invite the three participants to pose their question first. Would you like to open your mic, raise your hand, open your mic, and open your camera? I, we have, wait a minute, a few people raising hand. Um, the first would be a rehabilitation mental from um, Naimata 
mental hospital would you please open your mic and open your camera hello hello miss would you please to open your mic are you hear me clearly yes crystal clear thank you please ask okay. a question thank you so much uh, my name is Imakulata. i'm a nurse and now i work at a mental health hospital rumah sakit jiwa Mata in east nusa tenggara and especially in uh, rehabilitation uh, room and thank you for uh, such a uh, A question for Ruma Kinasi, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what makes you, or what makes motivate you to build a Ruma Kinasi? And then, first, first question, and then second is, uh, you said that everything is free. Uh, it means that uh, every patient is not is have not uh, pay for anything. So how 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 you run uh, organization without uh, paying from a patient? Yes, and then um, when you start the organization, it means you have to like cost a lot. So how how can you manage it like? You ha you you get uh, money from your own, or you have like sponsor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Eddie Kayano. Uh, are you receiving the point of the question? Okay. Uh, dari Naima, RSC Naimata, beliau menanyakan bahwa pertama adalah motivasinya, Bapak motivasinya apa mendirikan rumah kinasi, yang kedua adalah tentang, uh, mohon maaf, yang kedua adalah tentang bagaimana Bapak mengelola itu, karena Bapak tadi menyebutkan bahwa uh, everything is free. Baik, dan kapan dimulainya uh, tentang pendirian rumah kinasi tersebut? Seperti itu Ibu? Apakah sudah adakah yang kurang ya, dari ya, Oke, okay. silakan Bapak Edi. Ah. Baik. <laughs> yes. Terima kasih. Uh, tujuan kami memanusiakan manusia bahwa mereka itu diciptakan tidak berbeda tapi sama dengan kita. Mereka juga punya hak untuk uh, mendapatkan hasil diterima secara uh, sebagaimana mestinya masyarakat pada umumnya itu motivasi saya jadi antara aku dan kamu adalah sama seperti itu kenapa oh iya mereka tidak kami apa tarif sepeser pun karena mereka kita rehabilitasi kita penuhi hak haknya jadi memang konsep dari Yayasan kami yaitu sosiopreneurship, jadi usaha yang kami jalankan kita kembalikan untuk operasional maupun untuk royalti dan uh, perlindungan serta kesejahteraan buat mereka. Kami merintis sejak tahun 2017 sampai saat ini dan kami badan hukumkan pada tahun 2019. Seperti itu Ibu, jawaban dari Bapak Edi, apakah ada yang perlu diklarifikasikan? Ya, yeah, like uh, when you start the organization, that should be like, uh, uh, you, you, you get uh, the money from your own, or mm -hmm. their support, their uh, supporting you, support you to, to run the organization. Mm -hmm. Apakah Bapak dari pemerintah ataupun ketika mengelola yayasan rumah kinasi, apakah mendapatkan support dari sumber yang lain, Pak? Iya, full 100% uh, untuk operasionalnya dari usaha yang kami lakukan, yaitu membuat batik ciprat beserta turunannya. Dan kami didukung oleh pemerintah dalam hal uh, mungkin pelatihan, 
terus kami bermudah untuk akses akses pemasaran dan kita dibantu untuk uh, apa untuk bila mana pemerintah mengadakan pasar pasar dari sekup lokal maupun internasional. Oh, that's great. Uh, I forgot one question. Yes, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss, because connection matters. Would you please to repeat your question? Okay. Uh, Uh, card or family card but how about if a uh, patient that uh, they're without family like uh, homeless and there are no, no family because they are they they don't have like identity identity card uh, how how can uh, you manage it thank you Bapak, pertanyaan dari Resina Mata adalah uh, jika seseorang atau pasien itu tidak memiliki ID card atau KTP dan tidak juga tidak mempunyai KK, bagaimanakah uh, apakah bisa diterima di yayasan rumah Kinase dan apakah uh, uh, bagaimana memanage-nya, Bapak? Iya, memang banyak yang kami ada beberapa klien yang masuk di tempat kami itu kiriman dari lembaga pemerintah dan mereka tidak punya identitas jadi mereka kita carikan uh, identitas buat mereka kita kerjasama juga dengan admin duk untuk identitas mereka seperti itu oke okay. uh, kita kita lihat dulu dengan biometrik asalkan ada penanggung jawab saat mengirimkan klien ke tempat kami oke okay. Oke, okay, thank you. I think that's all. Sukses untuk rumah kinasi. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. A few points from this discussion is the motivation of uh, rumah kinasi is to humanize the human. And it's all free because their profit uses for their need. Uh, so when a uh, patient gain their salary or their, their wages, they use it for their need. So it's all free to all of member in the Rumah Kinasi Foundation. And when someone come to Rumah Kinasi didn't, didn't have a national ID, uh, this is uh, no need to worry because uh, Rumah Kinasi already cooperate with the local government to uh, regain their national ID. That's why everyone is accommodated to this uh, foundation like this. M maybe it's inspired to other country or other, other area in Indonesia to build some Rumah Kinasi, another Rumah Kinasi model. Is there, uh, moving next to the next question, maybe other participants would you like to ask a question? Oh, I see in a checkbox. Dari, from Yanet RSJMS, termasuk untuk jaminan tenaga kerjanya juga, Pak. Oke, okay. ya, beberapa kasih. pertanyaan saya saya bacakan ulang ya Pak. Termasuk untuk jaminan ketenaga kerjaan. Jadi mereka semuanya kita daftarkan di BPJS ketenaga kerjaan dua program mm -hmm. secara free, tidak mengurangi uh, hasil royalti mereka. Oke, okay. for the next question, Yanmet uh, uh, RSJS MS ask a question about is there any uh, employee as insurance to the member of rumah kinasi and mr eddy said yes then it not uh, reducing their wages oh. lanjut untuk pertanyaan selanjutnya dari yang met rsjms untuk rumah kinasi apakah rehabilitannya ada batas waktu bapak untuk tinggal di rumah kinasi karena tadi di video ada asrama yang sekaligus menyediakan layanan kesehatan dan pengobatan jiwanya wah menarik sekali silakan bapak eddy ya yeah. Terima kasih Yanmet RSJMS. Jadi uh, klien di tempat kami ada batas waktunya Bapak. Uh, bila mana uh, mereka kita anggap mampu untuk kembali ke keluarganya. Sebelum keluarganya uh, menerima kembali,
dalam satu minggu sebelum mereka kita kembalikan ke keluarga, kita beri edukasi bagaimana cara kepada keluarganya mereka, bagaimana cara mendampingi mereka sehingga ada keterlanjutan uh, antara program rehabilitasi di tempat kami dan apa yang harus dilakukan oleh keluarga mereka. Baik, for the next question, Jan Medres, CMS asked about the limited time to stay in the foundation. Is there any limited time? Because in the video, they saw about the dormitory to accommodate the members. And Mr. Eddy answered that, yes, we have a limited time. Uh, time to stay in the dorm and but before one week before they going home they need uh, rumah kinasi will provide an education family education and family therapy so that people with mental illness coming home with uh, uh, welcome by their family like that for the next question dari masih dari yan met rsjms bapak ini kalau saya salah sepertinya memang untuk rumah kinasi ya. Kalau boleh tahu rata-rata berapa lama sampai rehabilitan kembali ke keluarga Bapak? Iya. Uh, minimal ada yang tiga bulan sudah kembali ke keluarga karena kami anggap sudah uh, mampu untuk bersosialisasi di masyarakat. Rata-rata antara tiga bulan sampai ada yang lima tahun masih di tempat kami. Karena memang mereka belum mandiri. Yang pertama, yang kedua... Dia tidak, mereka tidak punya keluarga yang berikutnya keluarga tidak mau menerima mereka kembali mungkin karena trauma-trauma masa lalu. Oke, okay. yang menarik CMS asking about uh, the average stay in the foundation, how many uh, rehabilitation on the member stays in the foundation and go back to the family. And Mr. Eddy said that answer the question that in usually they they stay among three months until five years so it can it's depend on evaluation and depend on their ability to come home okay thank you mr eddie and thank you yan meter cms this uh maybe this uh discussion will enlighten us about the same foundation and the same act as inspirational as rumah kinasi I would like to invite another member, another participant from our hospital, maybe from another hospital. Kami mengundang untuk Bapak Ibu semuanya, partisipan, partisipan dari webinar untuk mengajukan pertanyaan. Kepada dua narasumber kami, apakah masih ada pertanyaan yang perlu didiskusikan lagi? Yaitu kepada psikiater Dr. Ahna Purnamasari dan juga Bapak Edi Cahyono dari Yayasan Rumah Kinasi Mandiri. Oh yes, RSCMS Min Rumah Sakit Jiwa Mutiara Sukma. Thank you very much. Terima kasih Bapak. Oke, okay, Bapak Ibu, apakah masih ada yang ingin ditanyakan lagi? Oke, okay, masih ada yang raise hand dari rehabilitasi mental Rumah Sakit Jiwa Naimata. Oke, okay, baik. Baik, terima kasih Bapak Ibu semuanya. Jika tidak ada pertanyaan, kita lanjut pada sesi selanjutnya. Due to time constraints and any unanswered question will be addressed via email and we will send the summary of the question for today's seminar into your emails. And now as we reach the conclusion of this insightful webinar, we would like to express our deepest gratitude to all distinguished speaker, participant and other organizing teams. Your contribution have made this event resourcing success, fostering a global dialogue on psychosocial rehabilitation. As we reflect on this discussion and insights shared today, let us carry forward the spirit of collaboration and innovation in our respective fields. 
together, we can continue to make strides in mental health and psychosocial rehabilitation. And I would like to invite Dr. Junior, would you like please to give a closing remark? Okay. Thank you uh, for all participants here and also for the organizers. I, um, I uh, would like to invite you all to be a travel mate for us for the journey of uh, recovery-oriented um, psychosocial rehabilitation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yuniar. That's all our seminar for today. We hope that we can uh, light our torch higher to enlighten the other people's lives. And thank you very much to all of the participants. And thank you. May, uh, may you all have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. 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 Thank Ijin live, Ijin live, siap, makasih, sampai ketemu ya, di webinar makasih. selanjutnya. Terima kasih. Salam sehat, sehat selalu. Selamat kabarnya dok. Alhamdulillah, sehat-sehat. Mas Andi, beran Mas Andi. Batik-batik kan, Andi. Iya. Oke, keren, 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 keren. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Mantap Mas Randy, Dr. Yun. Ah, kasih semuanya supportnya mereka. Terima kasih. 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 Ter